I mean 28, verses 13. Then 44 to 45 talks about failure to obey the word of God. First of all, the blessings of obeying the word of God. And then thereafter, failure to obey the word of God. These cases come. And these cases are inclusive of poverty. Poverty being a serious, serious case. Because poverty causes you to not only stand still, but move backward. You are regressing when the spirit of poverty is over your life. All right, let's begin with John 12, verse 8. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. Leviticus 27, verse 8. But if he is too poor to pay your valuation, then he shall present himself before the priest, and the priest shall set a value for him. Second Kings 24, verse 14. Also he carried into captivity all Jerusalem, all the captains, and all the mighty men of valor, 10,000 captives, and all the craftsmen and smiths, None remained except the poorest people of the land. Luke 4, verse 18. Our familiar scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is the uh, interpretation of Isaiah, actually 61. Because the, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And finally, Deuteronomy 28. I love the book of Deuteronomy. It's a powerful book. The five books of Moses are called in Hebrew, the Pentateuch. Say it with me. Say Pentateuch. Pentateuch. So if you hear people talking of the Pentateuch, they're talking of the five books of Moses. Yeah, very strange that even though Moses wrote those books, the information contained there was before Moses was. Uh, just to tell you how God works amazingly in, in a way. Mm. How would you write the book of Genesis when you were not there in the beginning? Only by God's grace. Say amen. Mm. You will possess such knowledge yourself as you walk with God. Knowledge that will blow apart your husband, your boyfriend, especially your boyfriend. Mm. He will fear you because you will terrorize him each time he looks at you and he looks at your intelligence and the words that come out of you. Let May God bless you abundantly with such wisdom. Can we read Deuteronomy now, 28? It reads, verse 13, And the Lord will make you what? The head and not the tail. These were the plans of God initially. That you and I be the head. They have not changed. As long as we walk with him, he wants to empower us and bless us. And you shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, all blessings or promises of God are conditional. Say conditional. Mm. It's on condition that you do what he asks you and me uh, to do, which I command you to do and carefully and are careful to observe them. Verse 44, he shall lend. Now, this is the reverse of verse 13, if we don't obey. And he, you shall lend to, he shall lend to you, but you shall not lend to him. And it goes on to say, where are we here now? But you shall not lean to him. He shall be the head and you shall be the tail. Verse 44. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded you. We defined on Sunday quickly with what did we say? We say the dictionary defines poverty as the state or condition of having very little or no money, goods, or means of support. When you are in that condition, you are described as very poor. I want you to look at your neighbor. Don't say anything. Just look at them. They will get the message and say, in your mind, you are asking them, could it be you there? Don't verbalize it. Just say, could it be you there? Unless you confront something 
you will never overcome it. Amen. Unless you look at it squarely yep. and confront it, you will never come out of it. Amen. That's why it's always very important to be honest with yourself, yeah. especially introspection. When you look within and say, this is me, and therefore I want to deal with me because that's where I am. When you do that to life, you are always moving. People are afraid to evaluate themselves or to do self-evaluation and say, you know what, I failed there, I failed there, I failed there. It is as you honestly carry out a self-evaluation about your life that things begin to change. Say amen. Mm. If you're forever losing one boyfriend after the other, self-evaluate. Say, what's wrong with me? Why are these guys so coming? Yeah. And then running away. Instead of always blaming them, yeah. look at yourself. There must be something that you may be doing yeah. that causes the guys to fly away. Because guys have wings. They do fly. <laughs> Most guys have what? Wings. Yeah. Once you deal with that and stop defending yourself, you will go far. You will find that the Holy Spirit will tell you inwardly with a still small voice, it is that thing there that you need to reduce. Mm. Maybe you're talkative. Mm. You talk and talk and talk and the guy feels, you know what? He four. <laughs> Touch the lady next to you and say, hello, radio four. We have a no radio four. Kunzimabazalanugulam <laughs> Three <laughs> AM. <laughs> I will say answer like, and and you may not be babachi. We are forget to in fact we are to take us to go We are throw kuruma when I do. Oh, fit the same happy Ah, katsibalege jansa kachana kona. The dictionary therefore defines poverty as the state or condition of having no money, goods, or means of support. It further defines poverty as scantiness insufficiency, the deficiency of necessary. The deeper a person steps, you are welcome, Doc. How are you? Are you happy, Doc? Mm. The deeper a person steps into poverty, the greater the impact on the person's life and end of that generation to come. Here's what we say, Don Sand, if you fail to deal with poverty in your generation, it doesn't die with you. Mm -mm. It has a tendency like all other cases of moving from one generation to the other. Two words that move from generation to generation. One of them is blessing. If you are blessed, you will find that the next generation the Bible says up to the fourth generation. If there is a case or case that you have not dealt with, it also moves from one generation to the other generation. What are we saying? Deal with the spirit of poverty now. First of all, poverty is in your mind. It starts in the mind before as a man thinketh 
so is he. How you think determines the outcome of your life. If you say my parents failed or they were not well to do or they didn't make it, I will make it. That's the right way to think. Something begins to shift because you are allowing God's word to permeate into your spirit and begin to work wonders in your life because you are allowing yourselves to stand up and say, I will work hard to come out of this. It's very easy to deal with poverty. Number one, prayer. But number two, hands. If we're saying hands, we're saying hands with mind. Combine these two and fight it. You can fight it, it will end up running away. Continue to fight it. You can start to fight poverty with selling sweets and tomatoes, you fight it. Selling cakes, you fight it. Mm. Selling anything, selling shoes, buying things, you can fight it. I tell you, it won't be long before you leave that position and you find yourself coming out of it. You have to fight it. My problem and your problem is this, that we have this self-awareness that says, not me. I can't be seen like that. Everyone who's made a difference started somewhere. Every business that you see today, if you talk to the owner, they will tell you, I didn't start like this. Every church, if you talk to the founder, they will tell you there were eight people. Some of them will say it was me and my wife. Some of them will tell you there was nobody. It is from that cocoa that things change. So don't be afraid to start somewhere to fight poverty. Say amen. Don't be too important. Hmm. One thing that I always ask God to make me is, Lord, don't make me important. Don't make me feel I'm so important. That way I can be simple and do simple things and go forward. Because once I think I'm important, there are certain things that I won't stoop down to do. Yeah, I want to be able to move a chair when the chair is out there without thinking. Yeah. But if you are always thinking you're a guru, you will not move your chair. Mm. Never, 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 never. To the devil, yes, you are important. Tell him I'm important. But to God and things of God, remain small in your own eyes, says the word of God. Say amen. Manje way now you are too important. That's where the problem is. Now here's the problem for me. When you are too important and you are broke, hey, that's a wrong recipe together. It's a wrong combination. <laughs> because we let that, but you feel so important. So you won't do things that will help you to come out of that. Because then in your mind you've told me I can't be seen like that. I can't you won't ask others. Did you know that some people that make it, it is because they ask. Yes. Yeah. Please Hallelujah. tell me. Hallelujah. How do you do this oh and that God. and this and oh that and that? Oh, you don't know. Yes, what? Let's sit down. Yeah. Do you have time? Do you have an hour? Yes, I have an hour. Do you have a pen? When I can't write when someone is talking to you, especially someone of the same age, you feel you are getting smaller and smaller. You feel like they are looking down upon you. Teach me, teach me, teach me. When you create a gradient, God finds it easy to teach you and lift you up. Say amen. Touch your neighbor's children. Say, what was touch? Amen. Who's touching? Mbam, bimbam, kulumalai. Can you miss that? We have touch. I know. We have touch. We have touch. So we have to America three times. Just touch. Kulumalaye. Kulumalaye. As long as you feel you are important, you will miss many opportunities that God has. But if you tell yourself, yes, to the devil, very important. But hey, to you, God, can you teach me, please? Can I learn? I need to learn. There are many things that I don't know. And therefore, you are free to ask others and say, "Sugu katu kenu gains one chance." Usu abe zeku chela. We kala wutle gusu. I was abe zeku explaining. But you are learning, isn't it? Next time you are not asking her, you will shock her as you do it even much better than her. That's the process of learning. Is that not so? Say amen. The power of being a simple person. Ah ha! 
Ungazu buena manu le mali ziye tise nje pans. Ia buya kakuli be ine. Manji wena ula ipeni ya kona. Mm. Uli locha. <laughs> Combination. <laughs> but who's dacha? Kupela. Angazu kutu wihi nungo kikenayo. Mbambe futi tlopu. Kati who's dacha la anishu. Uwu teye umu tepati hau. Hey. Tell, tell, tell that man next to him and say, Umushu mushu wana mtala pati, ha! Like no very malawi, Umushu mushu sebi pati. So it is the next generation that we are all worried about and concerned about. Because you and I, our lives come and go, disappear. But the next generation, they're starting on. Some of them are in mother's wombs. Some of them have been born on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. That's a generation that we must. Yeah. I'm a grandfather now three, three, four times. Hey, we are Fanel, auntie. So many people in Davis will stop it up. Oh, no, no, no. Is it right? Is it right? So, it is the next generation that we worry about. Yeah. Is that not so? The next generation. Yeah. Because if we plunder everything now and forget the next generation, we are very bad leaders. Very bad leaders. If you as a senior family member, you forget the next generation that is coming. You are a bad person. I think you don't really, well, it's not up to me to say what I wanted to say. Let me stop saying that. Thing. Mm -mm. It's not up to me. This is God's life, isn't it? Mm. It goes without saying that there is an extreme poverty in our world today. The Bible even shows gradients of poverty. Levels or categories of poverty. Here are they, the poor. 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 Poorer. Poorest. Which category? Which when I think of poor rest with. <laughs> Let me define some things that are crossing my mind now. If you want to know whether you're poor, poor rest, or poorer, or poor rest, you want to pick it, your mind tells you it's a diamond, and you want to take it home, you are poor. <laughs> Leftovers. Mm. If or forever more you are thinking of leftover, if it's it well, what pile over last week, lower last month, he type you and you talk in Tadiabuya. Oh, yes, it would so be the movies, but you don't want to throw that thing. So, what would move was this thing is office, but ah, 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 but you rather have diarrhea than throw the food in the bed. Mm. Those are signs of poverty. <laughs> if you see yourself keeping bottles of water, aha, sule eh, ebana sote le kona pe, kuchuti nda baga mamu chere. If you keep, see yourself keeping many bottles of water, eh, even once you take is a hundred, there is more problems because by nature these bottles are, are create lots of volume, isn't it? Once you make a thousand, but when you are in a hotel, any into a one year to a hotel, you want to fill it, isn't it? So you want twenty to fill it. Liana ila engine waso pula liana waso pula liana wabati mengena pambi ni front yard kule zimote zifile ekele ni kule zimote zifile ngaimova kule zimote zifile every way kule zimote zifile his spirit of chuti la 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 apa i eri liya mkule kwe mkwe yenga kutuwa kia ma wevu zikangeni so kwe meno kufulu hindo va Showers. 
kutuwa masha was of blessing. Ungabunu njalo, mzalo wanuwa, umamuchele kuya shupu kuti atanga nisa mawaya lana. Ye poverty wala liyasa. Kati mocha kufanda kutumta ngene ina laita hape. He, so kuti we specialist. Kutuwa laya ufuni baba li. Mtu njalo. Ungabona isheti yako wena. Su kipikola su ipendulela. Ukwa su kiti njala si kenyiri. Si peri lepera ngapo. Su pendulela. The other side. Mupatu. Si chupegi isheti. Si zila ikala. Su ikipa kuhisike kuhisike kuhisike. Su chelu kosikas. Nang kosikas. Usale la pulungi si sheti ya mlepe nyabu ya la. Lift up your hands and say, deliver me, Lord, from the spirit of poverty. You may start there, but please don't die in that position. Nothing wrong to find yourself there, but work your way out of there. I can tell you poverty will cripple your mind and your soul too. You will never have any element to bless someone if the spirit of poverty has created a rage round about you. Say amen. So I've given you poor, poor, poor. The scriptures are there. Poverty in the Bible. The scripture therefore makes it, or scriptures make it very clear that poverty is a matter of the spirit. You deal with it in the spirit realm. And then if you want it to disappear, use your mind and your hands, please. Fight it. Fight it with everything that you have. I can tell you there is no rock that can withstand constant hammering without cracking. Keep on punching at it. In the morning, in the evening, find ways. Ask God to give you ways to defeat it. Keep on punching and punching. It will soon give up. And it will move to your neighbor and far away from you. Say amen. amen. So it is a matter of the spirit. Isaiah 61 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. Luke 4 verse 18 talks of the same thing. We say to a man called Benjamin Franklin states, poverty often, often deprives a man of all spirit and virtue. It is hard for an empty bag to stand upright. In short, when the spirit of poverty attacks you, the levels of confidence disappear. Mm. Yeah. Find someone who is attacked by that spirit. You will see they may be intelligent, they may be clever, they may be handsome, they may be pretty, but there's no confidence in them because it is a spirit that seeks to eat away from the inside out, waking, out waking and, and destroying you and destroying everything that God has given you. Say amen. amen. So it is very difficult for an empty bag to stand upright. Talk to your neighbor and say, I hope you're not an empty bag. So certainly therefore, poverty is not a blessing from God, but a case. Deuteronomy 28, the scriptures that we read there, please, I don't want to read them again. You can, you can go through this. We then went on to talk of reasons for the dominance of the spirit of poverty. It is impossible to overcome what you are not willing to confront. Say it to your neighbor, please, while I'm hearing you. It is what? Yeah, please talk to them. I'm pointing a finger. I know your finger is bony. Point it and say, it is impossible to call them my friend. My friend, it is impossible to overcome all that which you are not willing to confront. Confront it, understand what it is. If you are willing to confront it, it will disappear. We said number one, poverty and lack is a case according to the scripture. We showed you from Genesis 3, verses 17 to 19. It is a case. It starts there. In the book of Genesis, it is a case. It talks of toiling. In the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, 
For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Okay, so Deuteronomy as well. We went on to say poverty is a byproduct of transgressing God's law and walking in unrighteousness. Lamentations 5, verse 1 and 5. This one I have to read, though I read it on Sunday. Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Look and behold our reproach. Our inheritance has been turned over to aliens. Can you imagine? Our houses to foreigners. We have become orphans and waifs. These are homeless people, abandoned. Okay. Our mothers are like widows. They are not widows, but they are like widows. Because the men have gone away, far away. The men come once a year. And when they come, they invariably leave that woman pregnant and they go again. She carries uh, the pregnancy alone and come again. Mm, that's a painful, painful life. That's a sign of a case. Watch verse 4. Verse 4 says, verse 4, we pay for the water we drink and our wood comes at a price. Next, verse 5, they pursue at our heels, we labor and we have no rest. In a certain nation, I can't mention, it is said most of the people there who work so hard, when they just get time to get a break and sit down, they fall asleep and their hearts stop because they are on the go for a long time. Long, long time. Some of them die in buses. Some of them die in trains because of, yeah, because the body, you can't be doing night shifts continuously, night and day shifts, night and without your body overheating. When your body overheats, then you begin to collapse and die. Again, do you blame those people? No. They are doing everything they know to do because they want to help their families. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what the spirit of poverty does. Yeah, it drives us to the extreme. And therefore, we find ourselves sacrificing our very health for the sake of trying to, to survive. Uh, Lamentations 5 verse 16. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us, for we have sinned. Can you see that? All right. Three, we said poverty is producing the wealth of the nations for the rich to enjoy. That explains Africa there. This is Africa. Africa, we have all the raw materials. No continent is rich in raw materials like Africa, but yet very poor. So we mine what we, we do. We plant what we do, and we sell it raw as it is. Those guys then put value on it, and then they send it back to us. And then we show off to each other. I bought this so and so. I bought this in Europe. But it came from here. When you fail to think, someone will think on your behalf and charge you for thinking. Mm, and that's the story of Africa. It's a rich continent, but it is a continent that is somehow steeped in poverty like no other continent. Uh, number four, poverty is having no choice of making to do with let, leftover second hands and rejected things. Hmm. At times, yes, maybe you can buy second-hand things. But let it not be your lifestyle. Let not your lifestyle be kotama and you're kotamaring all the time. Hey, surely you can't be going to kotama continuously. Everything, everything. Hey, hey. May God help us. Don't worry. Don't leave the church and say, Bishop said, yeah. No, keep on coming. But I pray that as the word of God enters you, Kotama will be a thing of the past. Touch the sister next to you and say, Leviticus 23 verse 22 says, When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field. When you reap, nor shall you gather any gleaning from your harvest. It says for the poor, these 
God talking to the rich, he is saying, rich people, in your fields, on your fields, please make sure you leave that which is on the peripheries so that the poor can come and clean. Mm. So that the yeah. May you be the one that will be doing that and living that on the peripheries of your fields and not the one cleaning from that. May God so empower you in this season in the name of Jesus. Lift both your hands and say, Lord, anoint me to deal with the spirit of poverty in my generation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Number five. Poverty is having no choice as to where you take your residence. Mm. Very well, Zonda. You would rather be at work than be in your location. You don't say happily. Please ask your neighbor. Once you confront something, you are bound to come out of it. Yeah. Bound to come out of it. And therefore, poverty therefore pushes people to places where they don't want to stay. Wouldn't it be good to choose where you want to stay? Mm. Wouldn't it be good? Mm. I don't want to mention locations here. See, we come from different places here. I dare not mention that. <laughs> but I'm just talking about the area of Tandai. The name of my areas, whether they are in the western suburb or eastern suburb, they are good areas that you would want to choose to stay in. Yeah. Yeah, but if you are forced because of circumstances, uh, then that's not good. Yeah. I pray that in the next few months and years, we will see God empowering many of us here in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm. Housewarming parties. Here is my, my usher here. Usher, I'm sitting in the housewarming party. Afternoon. I could have Afternoon. From two to six. We have a high and interior decorator. A decorator, decorator, a highly landscape, a pan of child, a visit of potisa. You know how ladies do it. Can I hack you? Can I hack you? I want to tell you how my name is a guy. You are moving up the ladder. Towards. 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 Fidosis. <laughs> No gim bambi le leo perfume. I saw zon to moya. Ugu taka puma panti na pari zi tato moya. Agu se la lute. 
One rupee. Sia vazi piratina. Osi zizaneli. Ungabana rupee kunzwenga nzwenga. Kangeli perfume. Vazi be mejile. La pana. Ngabu luguti mfuna tu hags e church. Amfuna ujitalisi haki ya mla pana. Asi ukango wama ladies babachi. Maunga basi. Wakaya maniba hamdu. But I. Wealth makes many friends. But the poor is separated. Even from his own friend. Baba lega bangani. Lega li wana wanu kani meba lega. Banga uweya so wawena ngani wa. Ha ha ha. Wale friendship ya kwa. Sebe vale gile. It's true, wa ndi? They run away. People are very strange. Once they perceive you have some money, they all gravitate towards you. Once they think you have no money, ocho miba kwa sebe kuchile. Kule nko makutala nga nila, lero ocho mba mba nchile. Masala nyeto. Eh, ocho mi. Niba trust ocho mi. Bamba legila one by one. Nisa te, ifo ni akala, Hey. Oh, answer. I will call you back. And they never call you back. If you call someone and they say, I will call you back, they never call you. Chances are, not always, chances are they don't want to talk to you. But furthermore, chances are they don't put a premium on your relationship with them. So stop it and just say, I'm going to call you back. Don't call them back. Mchi, tigna baani, aba faga ival yugu uta ngaboni namba yako uyaba wasguti. At the earliest convenience, they will phone you back and say sorry, I was engaged. I thought to you. Ungabona utali vigi onge kuti. Ungabolo kumtinga. The most but desperate kumtinga. Now, can I give you a tip, ladies? If a guy, if you call a guy and a guy does not return your call, a guy whom you love. And whom you claim loves you does not retain your call. Agagutani, Luan. Don't waste your time. Utum kipe vele gu gu tuen gu gu tata pe gu tuen aso tata pe gu contact list. Utum kipe. Eh eh. Utum goodbye. Abu nenge sum kipe. Uza ufunle ni dawa sum kipe. Umche uja. I don't think we na vele ugu classi ab. Ngeru pume pan. There is no way you will phone someone and they don't return your call if they value you. I can tell you even at midnight they will return that call or send you a message. I saw your missed call. I'm so sorry. It's late now to call you, but I'll call you next thing in the morning. They'll call you. They'll call you. Babuna ngani wena ufit kuklasi yako. Lawe ba kipe kuklasi yako. I know kuklas three, but ba kipe kuklas three. Block them. Block them. Unga chonu shupika nga iluanu mtu luanu. I see mtu wa kukense zulu in luanu. No me muten jan. Hey guys, listen to me. If you phone a lady three times and she doesn't reply, that lady most probably doesn't value you. Yeah, doesn't like you. You know how to, can I teach you men how to fix that lady in the spirit? Find another one better than her. Find another one. Ungene gu platinum la bad. Utinga matikiza kum tu e two hundred dollars, hundred hundred. Yena loto ai wakibaya begu standard wena ngapa. Ubulo kusuguma suguma ngatari pas. Anjo abutle zukai lengal. Uchibili kukage lengapuzi. I'm looking for someone there, somewhere there. Um chise gakul. Yenu abe nyeku ku VIP. We abe nyeku VIP. Where there's a standard game for a pill at a pan, um, ting and him for a pill. What intends of being a leader? How are you? What got to tell it in the pan? In the way, so it is a pan. 
Umbone chona. Kuna pia bimi le nyi menya nere ana tia inga kufun. Umchi se kakun. Usi na usi si linjani. Usi can I whisper something? Mani wafu malapana mani si soke na. Na muwe la pana. Man Jesus ya pili uza wuti la pana zumli lo. Una tuai. <laughs> hey, am I preaching, guys? Amen. I could go to no car. I'm rotting, rotting. I'm fun. Soon, my love passes with a moon. Can you say, Moena, on Ken? Babu, oh, my roll up of a chain, go, my belly, and I worship the night at the maro. What, 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 what? Day and night, day and night, night and day. Hey, you lay at it. Thank you for day and night, night and day. We have all the mountain. Hey, as I can get my room, a deep voice, and it goes day and night, night and day. Day, why? Because we will. Ah. Mother, I wish I look at night club. We are the best one. Can you day and night live with one another? Each time we go, my day and night, night and day. We learn to sleep with mother, lap a day and night. Poverty is having no choice as to where you take your residence. Your friends leave you, ladies and gentlemen. Number six. Poverty means being despised by friends and rejected by all and Sandra. Oh, it's a difficult thing when friends despise you. If you want to know that your friends despise you, say something of your opinion. Yeah, that's wisdom. That's wisdom. Wisdom. All the brothers of the poor hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He may pursue them with words, yet they abandon him. Kunzima 3 28, verse 30. You shall betroth a wife. But another man shall lie with her. <laughs> hey, Basundu Baba Lapache. You shall build a house, but you shall not dwell in it. You shall plant a vineyard, but you shall not gather its grapes. Your ox shall be slaughtered before your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Your donkey shall be violently taken away from before you. Uba bemi wako. Hey. Ah, poverty is not good. Number nine. The spirit of poverty makes the wealth to elect to be your spokesperson. Did you know that the poor have no words? Don't find a person who's quiet in church and think that it's a form of humility. Mm. The other way to find that it's lack of is poverty. Mm. Poverty will silence you. Poverty alone says don't speak. Watch that person. That's why many people think, oh, so and so has changed ever since they got a job. They were quiet because poverty says shut up. Poverty ministers to you. Most of people here that you think are quiet and are humble, they're far from being humble. Because poverty itself will humble you. If you see a person serving God when they have money, genuine salvation has entered. I can tell you that. Genuine salvation has entered. So poverty just puts a gag in your mouth. says you can't speak. So in a meeting where people are gathered and everybody is asked to say, those that have parents, 
those that have kids in some of these schools, there is a PTA, isn't it? Uh, you can't say anything there. You're always late. You're paying your fees uh, so many months after. But I was when I was never on Bama Richest. Uzu Sugu, been sitting and he contributed ten thousand to a book. Usanyalo Lutindo. The spirit of poverty makes wealth to el- the wealth to elect or to elect to be your spokesperson with you having no say in matters that affect you and your future. Have you ever seen that it's always the rich that are speaking on behalf of the poor? Who's Kulumel? Bangabona no we as in twenty. Now they pass it to one around to the pass it to one but more people position. Now the Maku down three. Ava Yaman to Wonka Gulam Kukula, but more people position. On our remote and people chunga my wire. As long as you do a more people position because they perceive you're doing well among the poor. Hey. Please look at you and say, Kunja ni ngwele ya baswe layo. I am trying to annoy you so that you come, you get angry with this. Yeah. Touch you and say, how are you a champion of the poor? You are poor too, but you are a champion of the poor. <laughs> We a three star, Bagubi Zile, Uduzogusa, and the new Mumto poor. So, so many Tunkoskas who cut Sukoskas with three star. In your Zagas can be slang at a bar. Say figure, Conapa. Bagu give a Tipaskila Gorelia Casmula, Bebuga Omnium to poor. In Kerumba Bishop put when I'm two three star, Gunja. Fight this thing called poverty. A certain man called Sir Harrington. He wrote a book. And the title of the book is The Invisible Poor. When you're poor, no one sees you. Did you know that people can... You can be in a meeting, they'll be asking. That's what it is when you're poor. (laughs) You're invisible. They don't see you. Uh, touch your neighbor who appears to be poor and say, Njenga you better change that. Mm, better change that. Why am I preaching a message provoking you like that? So that you do something about it. Because if I am softer here, I sympathize with the position you are in, I do. 100%. Believe you me. But as long as I don't confront this thing, you won't see the need to confront it yourself. As Kali said, "Nko na bte na round uban bishom pilom tulo uti katuwe nunga apu poor poorer or poorest." As Kali said, "Nko na where are you? Poor, poor. Don't tell me about your parents. Tell me yourself. Poor, poorer or poorest. If they don't want to tell you, you, you just estimate and give them a category." And say, I think you fall under this category. Hmm. <laughs> Number ten, poverty means someone elects to take uh, someone rather else takes credit for all the hard work you've done. Hmm. All the hard work you've done. The greatest hard workers in a factory, in an industry, are, are, are not managers. Did you know that? They are the people in the shop floor, in the factory. They work hard. But they are paid the least. Mm. For me, our economy, broken down as it is, presents a silver lining on this thing. It says all of us must do something to get an income. And therefore, it encourages us to be innovative. To begin to step out and say, if I do this and that and that. In fact, you have never seen a a nation like this nation that is small scale 
businesses. Yeah. It starts from there. Yeah. America was built by small business. Yeah. Yeah. A certain economist called uh, a Friedman wrote a book and said, small is beautiful. Yeah. Meaning small things, small industries. They build America from small things. Yeah. Businesses that were owned by individuals. But those businesses became larger and larger and larger. It could be that we as Zimbabweans, if we don't get satisfied so quickly and fail to reinvest what we get, we will then remain small. But if we do, then we enlarge and increase. What's the name of you? Starbeck. Starbed. Hey. Starbed. Stop it. And sons. And wife. I'll very come to you, Gachel. Uchel, you have a pez, you look on a umfasu, a valama pen. Uchel, a game win. What a wife. We thank God for her. <laughs> At least just nine, verse 16. Then I said what? Wisdom is better than? Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. We are so much as if you try wisdom in Mangalisa, they will measure you concerning what you have. Let's put it aside. Yeah. In comes a fool, but who has something? They will listen. They will write notes. Yeah. A poor man, they will never write notes. Yeah. They will never write notes. Because you, they are simple saying, why doesn't your wisdom help you? Mm. I see. So they fail then to make God deliver you. Number 11. Number 11. The case of poverty makes things to slip out of your hand just before it begins to function. Now, ah. Your brother almost or sister nearly. Everything is almost. Almost. Touch your neighbor and say hello brother almost or sister nearly. Almost got married. But it didn't happen. Almost got a job. Almost. Almost. They had said the job is yours but ah, they changed their minds. Overnight. Almost. Everything about you is nearly. 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 And therefore, there you are. Have you ever heard of brother almost and sister nearly? Mm. It could be that it's you right there. Say amen. Number 12. Hard work without result is a proof of poverty. Mm. It can be that you are working hard continually. The word here, operative word is continually continually, and there's no fruit, then the spirit of poverty has come upon you. Mm. It's called toiling. Yes, there are times where we work hard, hard, but after some time, please begin to see some fruit. Mm. If you're working hard, no fruit, hard, no fruit, check in the area of a case. Why is it others just touch one, two, and three, and four results? Mm. Why is it for you? It's been 15 years. You are toiling. There must be a change. Say amen. There must be a what? So hard work without results is proof of poverty. Such people also having very little harvest for all their labor. Nothing. There is a case in Genesis 3, 17 and 19. In the sweat of your face you shall eat your bread. Both thorns and thistles, verse 18, I'm reading back one, shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. That was the case initially pronounced there. And therefore, when you are like that, you need a breakthrough for everything. There are some things that need keys, not breakthroughs. You can't have a breakthrough for a toothpaste. Hi, hi, hi. I swear she had a breakthrough on my toothpaste. As a ten year toothpaste. Hi. <laughs> a breakthrough for a toilet paper. Yeah. A testimony is because I got a breakthrough. Mm. 
I, I, I see a chain now, my breakthrough, Sancha. <laughs> a breakthrough for Vaseline. Me, I grew up wanting a breakthrough for Vaseline. A breakthrough for eggs. Now, when you hear my testimony, you know how poor I was. That was the case. A breakthrough for eggs. I saw a man wearing a vest, a holy vest. You remember those vests for men? That is holes. He opened his door, lived on ground floor. I was passing by. I'd never eaten eggs myself. And I'm passing by. This man is open his door, taking off his shirt. He has eggs. He has what you call cane paper. Mm. Sprinkling. And he had white suds. Apparent. I don't like white suds. I used to like it then. I saw it there. And slowly he was eating and looking at me as I was passing by. I looked at him and I said, Lord, I was in a Christian. When I grow up, I want to be empowered like this man. I wanted to eat boiled eggs. That was my vision. Uh -huh. I admired the man. His vest was as white as... Maybe that's why I love white shirt. Today I'm not wearing white. That's why I love white shirt. Because I saw that white vest and said, my God, this man must be enjoying life. Can you see the grades and gradients of poverty? In my own category, I admired a person eating boiled eggs. You eat boiled eggs all the time. Not me. I said, Lord, if ever there is anything I must get, I boiled eggs. I thought when I grow up, I will buy a tray and sit down and demolish the whole tray. That was my wish. All my stories are true. This story is true. Mm. Boiled eggs. So, may God help you, please. So that you, you up your desires and your wish list may change. Your wish list is too low. Too, too, too low. Hi. Who got the motor uncle? Who bela? Hi, hi, hi. We na thing here. I go. I go to the uncle. We. Who go for a chill? Uncle, we go to the lah. Porodil. No. Sala we ne porodil. Who be le in the mandara? Le in the footy cholo cho. May you change that. It's just enlarging your vision. Say amen. So therefore, breakthroughs in drinking cup of water. Ah, yeah, yeah. Now it's so full. Toothpaste. Pass for Hey, you're going pass for you. You're going to pass for you. You're going to pass for you. You're going to pass for you. But pass for you anyway. Pass for you. Emil. Vaseline. Socks. I once wore a pair of socks belonging to my uncle. But they were all pair of socks. He had put them there somewhere by the corner. There were many. He had folded them. I had... And I'm saying, talk his socks. So I wore them. But he was with his first son. Yes, he was first son. He had a disease. A disease for, yeah, what is it called? Fungi. Fungi infection. It affected me. No, I'm fine. Now, don't worry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can give you my socks. You can find. But it affected me. Hmm? Stealing someone's socks. <laughs> or stealing someone's pants. Hey. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> breakthrough, your pant. Because as a man, as you grow up, if you don't have a pant, that is yours. Certain things will stick out completely. Am I preaching? <laughs> it's a must. Ladies can survive with that. A man can't. Kata who was mama chin? We are. Shuta gula luto pela gumta la pela. I my name is Mela. Now I'm going to chop a clap and slash in. Club new about here. He na I forget number. And he said, uh, if you phone him, he can extend. Yeah, he has power to 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 to, to enlarge. 
So now sola mama chele. Hamba lo mtala. Umtalu right. You say so fine. Kogu fagi wela padunguti. Here is the number. Enlargement. So why you want to do it? It's big. How is it going? Mm. True story. This is a true story. How many have seen it in Jobbik? You see now. But the numbers were busy. <laughs> Did you see it? See? Even Bishop never saw it. He was seen for some time looking and, say, and writing the number. <laughs> but he missed a digit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this bishop is a rude bishop, isn't it? Number 13. When a man is under the influence of the spirit of poverty, he keeps working where he does not like. Doing the things he doesn't really like. And possibly working for people he doesn't like. Can you see? There are people that are holding jobs today. You know they are doing it for the sake of income. They don't like that job. They don't like the environment. Yeah. They don't like how they are treated. Yeah. But they can't leave. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't leave your job as yet. Start something by the side. Yeah. Start a business. Some it will tell you the business itself that you are fine now. You can leave the job. Amen. And leave politely. Thank them for helping you. Amen. Suffer with them there. But leave. Mm -hmm. And say goodbye nicely. And thank them. You may need to trade with them in years to come. Yeah. Mm. Don't spit on their faces. Yeah. No. So there you are. That's what poverty does. It will put you in a corner. Mm. Working for people that you don't like. Genesis 4, 9 and 12. Then the Lord said to Canaan, where is Abel your brother? And he said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now, you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive. A curse is a vicious thing. According to the Bible, it will follow, devour you in this generation, and the second generation, and third generation, and fourth generation, if no one deals with it in the fourth generation, it will rear its ugly head and start the process all over again and again. It needs someone who says, I say no. Stand up with me. I say no. Say it again. Say, I say no. One more time. I say no. So, failure and poverty takes away the right of such a person to speak. And therefore you are destroyed completely. But we thank God that we are in Christ. Amen. And in Christ, we find a way of dealing with this thing called poverty. Amen. We must fight it. Don't deal with it with prayer only. Africa is the most praying continent, yeah. but the most poor. You know why? We are using one side. Okay, We need other side. Amen. If you employ prayer, yeah. powerful, Amen. don't forget hard work. Amen. Don't forget Amen. to wake up and kick laziness in your life. Together these two Amen. will propel you to greater heights. Are you hearing me? Amen. Never in your life despise prayer. You are making a big mistake. Amen. Never listen to someone that says wealth is not in the equation of prayer they don't know what they're doing. Wealth is in the equation of prayer, but there is another side of the equation that is hard work. Amen. Mm. There is nothing called, this one is not in the equation of prayer. Nothing. Nothing. Anything. But it needs the principles fulfilled. Prayer, hard work, wealth. Amen. Wealth alone, hell, without prayer. It will drive you to hell straight. May God help us and help us all in the name of Jesus Christ. Say amen. amen. So combine the two. Number 14. This spirit of poverty is a strong man. <laughs> it's a strong entity. 
demonic entities and wants to stay for generations as long as it has a legal ground to stay. It wants to stay. You will see certain characteristics from one generation to the other. You will all suffer from it until someone says no Amen. in anger. Amen. Why? Why should they go like this? Why? But it needs hard work and prayer. Hard work and prayer. Fight it, please. Fight it when you are young. Start now. Don't wait for tomorrow. Fight it when you are young. Because when you fight it when you are young, you are bound to change the stage for the next generation. Change the stage. Get angry with it. Don't get, don't get angry with people that are doing well, better than you. No. Don't pull them down. It's called envy. You're going nowhere. Because anybody that you envy, you can't then reach that area. Fight it, please. Say amen. The spirit of poverty therefore becomes a demonic entity. It must be fought. It must be what? Fought in the name of Jesus. Command those who are reaching this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches. Riches that are gained outside Christ are called uncertain riches. They too have wings, they fly away because you are soon here today, gone tomorrow. But when that which you have obtained is through prayer and hard work, it's sustained. It becomes generational. It does not kill you. In fact, it causes you to enjoy life. Say Amen. Tendencies brought about the spirit of prayer. Oh, sorry. Spirit of poverty and <laughs> not prayer. Tendencies brought about the spirit of poverty. So where the spirit of poverty is manifesting, you'll find certain tendencies. I want to give you these while you are standing and then we close. These tendencies you will find. Number one, almost 99 point what, what percent people that are poor are lazy. Laziness. They're very lazy. Some of them are waiting for what we call a silver bullet. One day, one day this will happen. One day, I'll buy a state lottery ticket. One day, one, it, it will never come. We are gambler. It will never come. True wealth is coming from process. Process, 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 process. Start somewhere, please. Harvesters. Start some way. Say amen. So poverty, or rather laziness, is one of the characteristics of poverty. It makes poverty to increase. Proverbs 6, verse 6 to 11. Go to the end, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. You have never seen ants working hard. They do work hard. Watch verse 7. Verse 7. Which having no captain, overseer, or ruler, they have no leader, the ends. Eight, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the, in the harvest. Nine, how long will you, oh, touch your neighbor? The word slumber means sleep. Why do you like sleeping? Ladies, if you marry a man who loves to sleep, you are in trouble. There are men that just enjoy sleeping. The guy sleeps, he sleeps over 14, excuse me, over 14 hours sleeping. And you are the lady are working hard for that zombie of yours. Hey! Hey! for that zombie of yours. So possibly before you fall in love with that dude, say, how many hours do you sleep? If you see that is going north of seven, eight, get worried. 
get worried. All rich people have one thing in common. They value time, but they utilize hours. They work hard. Anyone that you look at and say, there is some resemblance of success, they watch their pattern. It's either they wake up early in the morning. Early in the morning. Ungaba fagachela wena. Ovun ugutla la wuzo kuchayi wan veli se abasafun. Eh. Short of them telling you know what. But as usamu. But as usamu hamba. When we have a local police, some of our fellows are full lady. Oh, nice cut. This is important. At a certain time, I'm going to say, Valig, they want to wake up early in the morning. When I will have a pen away. Slumbering. May God deliver you. So, how long will you slumber or slugger? When you will rise from your sleep, watch verse 10. Let's read it together. One, two, and three. And and yeah, please fold your hands like so. <laughs> you don't want a husband perpetually folding their hands like that. And you have to think for them. No. No, 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 no. If you find that you have a man that is a tendency of laziness, you are not married to them, cut the relationship now. It will help you. Please. As you leave this place, send him a WhatsApp. And say, dear Swinjor, mm. <laughs> uh, I think I perceive I'm going to suffer under your rulership and governorship. I hereby terminate this relationship forthwith. I don't want to see you again. We may be the same church, Zotopera. Mm. Till it. Remove him from your what list, contact list. Take him out. Let someone who's lazy as they are come in there. And you guys, you ladies, don't fall in love with only handsome guys. Most handsome guys don't provide. They're too smooth. Most handsome guys are very lazy and poor. Tingalono wa kanyigu tu ya ngale kupiale lo wanu muntu wana wasa hamba kutirae. Oh, what a handsome guy. What a, I have known ladies that are married to the most handsome guys. Bafun Gubalega. Sam Bonos is about the Labadi Chatilis Boom, so Muntila to come in with ya. Catus is Robon and Lapat. But by a smile, they are smiling. Don't always look at that alone. There are many other things. A guy may not be good looking, but he is hard working. He is a provider. He is the guy for you. Abantu ano wano siya ba dilute uti ba biwa. Anti eh eh. Anti wano mushi. Dilute abantu ano. Eh eh. Dilute abantu ano. Banga pumin jogo zubin joro luan. Bwa dilute. Anti wano zubin dilute. Dilute, Mama Chino. Dilute. Mm. If this was a marriage seminar, I was going to teach you how to dilute. <laughs> Next time I do a marriage seminar, I'll be teaching how to dilute and make kids look beautiful. When when Ababu is born, so muntu go right diluter. Kule formula. Okay. <laughs> it's a message on its own. <laughs> Dilute. Don't, don't bother the guy. Don't worry about these young ladies. I'll tell you. The boyfriend, the king, the king. Baza kala mumuntu wawolono mutelu wano. Aba tabate. Aba tota. Aba smooth, smooth, smooth. And chelele everything. Hi, hi, hi. Into the game in a month, even a whisker while you up. Why are you going for a smooth man? What do you look at me, daughter? Could be rough some way, could be laid down a rough coat. Is it? We would allow a woman of Webusu, 
Proverbs 20 verse 13. Do not love sleep. Please hear it from the wisest man, the richest man ever. Do not love sleep, lest you come to what? Let's read the next phrase together. Open your eyes and you'll be satisfied. When it says open your eyes, it does not say while you are in the blankets, open your eyes. No. Vuga! That's what he says. Open your eyes. Wake up. Open your eyes. And you eat bread. Say amen. Number two, drunkenness and gluttony. Fast. <laughs> Drunkenness and glutton. Drunkenness and glutton is also a major reason for poverty. Proverbs 23 verse 21 reads, For the drunkard and the what? Glutton will come to poverty and drowsiness would clothe the man with rags. So well love the brother I love the brother but we have a child we have a child so I think so when you drink continually and drink and drink and you don't stop Poverty is coming for you. Number three, wrong company. Yeah, Leave your friends, please. I don't know why you love such friends. Leave your friends. If you have friends that don't take you to the right ways, leave them. Leave them. Can I encourage you to exit the group? Don't wait tonight as you leave this, exit the group. Don't explain anything. Just exit. Yeah. There are groups that you are in that don't take you anywhere. Oh my God. Just exit. Come out. I don't know why you want to be in that group. It's a torment for you to be in that group. Come out of that group. Keeping wrong company will bring poverty and what? Destruction. There's a scripture. Proverbs 28 verse 19. Proverbs 28 verse 19. He who tills his land will have plenty of bread. But he who follows frivolity will have poverty enough into a zizenje. That's what that word means. Just leave. Please warn your neighbor now and say, mm, if you continue being poor the way you are, I, I may just end up leaving you. Mm. <laughs> frivolity. (laughs) 
Just talk to them and say, I have tried to lift you up, but hey, it's like we have a case. Nyazam. <laughs> So the kinds of people that the poor normally associate with will compound their problems. Mm. You had one problem, but because of your association, problems are compounded. Because there's a negative compounded effort that they bring to your life. And therefore everything falls apart. Yeah. Now if you're married to a man with a poverty mind, pray for him. When he's asleep, pour oil on his head. Not too much of it. Break his spirit of poverty. A man is made to be a leader. I'm a villa. I'm a villa. I'm a villa. What? Look at that man next to you and say, we are about We are tribus about tribus. Number four, biblical ignorance. Biblical ignorance. To fail to understand what God says about poverty, that we must fight it, confront it, and deal with it. Hosea 4, verse 6, familiar scripture. What does it say? My people are what? Destroyed because of lack of knowledge. 2 Timothy 2, 15. It reads, listen to this word. Be diligent. Tell you never be diligent. Seven za katalala. Now for na interpretation in the Seven za jani. Katalala. Be diligent. While you are young and you have lots of energy, work, 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 work. Work will never kill you. Never. Work, work, work. Sooner or later, it will produce results. Say amen. And number four, lack of contacts. Is it four? I me, I'm number four. Are you sorry? Oh, so I repeat it. So this is five there. Lack of contacts. Can you chuba na mbadi yini ubi? Anya igela mina buyan pele sponi disi. Ninety-four but five. four but two hundred. So this is five. Lack of context. Some people have justified perpetuity in poverty for lack of context. I and la malumela pan and la connection and la connection. Can I show you somebody in the Bible? Mm. Somebody in the Bible. Give me the scripture. Mm. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Verse two, please. Now there in Jerusalem, by the ship get a pool, which is called the Hebrew Bethsaida, Bethsaida, having five porches. Number three. In this lay great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Watch verse uh, For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and set up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for how many years? 30 years. Watch his problem. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want me to be well? Watch his answer. And that's your answer there too. The sick man answered him, say, I have no man. That's the answer of many ladies. I have no man in my life. 
<laughs> Why are you not happy? I have no man. Mm. Mm. Joy, why are you not happy? I have no man. Both, why have you not? I have no man. No. Doc, I have no man. I have no man. Oh my God. We can play around with that and leave it there. I have no man. I must preach a sermon called I have no man. I have no man. <laughs> I have no man. In other words, I have no contacts. Oh, yeah. No one that can help me. I have no contacts even in the government circles. I have no man. Everybody needs a man. He's called Aman. Mm, Aman. Every lady needs a man. I need a man. I need a man. Uh, so that I can lean my shoulder on a man. A man. A man. I need a man. Uchombe, I need a man. I need a man. When I'm almost is bam, me bam, me bam. When manifestation, sit it along. They manufacture a man. A man is always manufactured. I'm going to say, we have some booze. Go check out your city soon. No city, see where the city bishop puts it. This year, Kulom news is so obvious. Kulom news, Baba. My two city is so good. Two city this year. I say, I'm going to one question. What's that, that to Baba? Who says, you know, so tired. You are here, good child. Every year is Kofa Sack. What do you mean? So justifies Kofa. The name is Kofa. Amen. I have no man to put me. I have no man to marry me. I have no man who is Jolly. Um, Jolly. Can't see a chola loba and shoe. Sing a chola si so to a tina single mama. Um cholo, ufuna a man. Cholo. Can't see a pirum do as cholisa. Um cholo. Hey, cholo cholo. I have no man to cholisa me. Into the pool. <laughs> I need a man. <laughs> Mama Puff, do you need a man? <laughs> but yeah, he needs a man. Lava <laughs> Lama men, they wish the man could die. Seven children is covered as a bamber. As I said, they go pay for Mula. Every suit, nothing can loom Saturday, but you can bull a lane, but be the I Look at that married person next to you, a lady, and say, Do you want to come out or not? Do you want to come out? Where cheese are in you, Mouchis? Salaconapo. Chincha is into Upagat. Ungapumi. Upumelan. Was Ketela as a singe cotina. La Hambalo to him to a honeymoon. La Chelan into the honeymoon, Ligo honeymoon. Qua Chago honeymoon, Conan. We are Kumula that day, go honeymoon. Eh? Let's let a point, let you fourth floor, let's let a posa egg the window, Limu too. We are Kumula, but go honeymoon. Literally, last or mass go honeymoon. Fourth floor hotel about <laughs> on that day. Kuchisa, kufuta, ku honeymoon. Eh, laita leo honeymoon laita ya villa. Kati suziti sevrugu pumu pumela. Sad usiaga. I honeymoon leo usa ikumbuli. Ikumbuli lepe. Lachela na isule mtabe. Wamchela ukuthi umthanda kanjani. Ukuthi sizofa silahlana. Ziningi izinto ezikhulunywa ku honeymoon. Ziye sabe ke ezinye zakhona. I wish I was brave to say some of the namhlanje ngigwala I can't say much. But yes. Baba chela. 
kweche lwana ku honeymoon we kubrito umchele zonu mtala ku honeymoon i have no man to put me <laughs> i have no man to do what to put me <laughs> i have no man the final one is race skin family background lack of education race skin family background lack of age most people blame any of these for their poverty dina peri ani mundia ya segela ya chaya peranti good to see you never fun All right. <laughs> Race kid family background. Like by and chelu tse mpamansile. Sesi ndona ngu number 6 ati. Eh but I is super bad. Subuyela futhi ku 5. Ono sika ku 5. I apologize. I did uncle would say I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> Most people have something to blame. Don't blame your race. You can't change that. If you're brown, you're brown. If you're white, you're white. If you're black, you're black. Work with what you have Amen. and love what you have. Amen. Love it. Mm. Don't blame your skin. Don't blame your family background. Bazamo kholu labo khuku bafala bobeza mifi. When this is your moment. My father did this for me. No. The man is not here. The woman is not here you are here yeah. you are hearing these words mm. lack of education hi lokho ngakunceda bele ngawufuna hambi yebhalo ye night school ngencedeka lo and change that please don't blame these things we are done ladies and gentlemen today mm. x14 x4 verse 13 now let's read it together 1 2 3 Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men they marveled and realized that they had been with Jesus Hallelujah when you fund it but they changed their known world lift up your hands today haya it is the spirit of poverty that you and i must confront in the name of jesus put your hands down this point number 7 here spirit of religion as we close spirit of religion religion is a spirit we are not talking of knowing jesus we are not talking of a relationship religion is churchianity mm. spirit of religion that's even a greater force that binds people to poverty even after they have been born again here are some of the things that i listed there water from west africa those that have been with me for a long time i fought against this thing of people going to buy water in nigeria and tailoring their businesses How many remember me speaking 10 years ago? I said guys, this is a case. Yeah. Water from West Africa. Bengals from a man of God. Mm. There were stickers in those days. Mm. My papa can see you. Mm. Some people took photos of men of God and stuck them in their bedroom. Yeah. On the headboard, top there. The man of God is looking. <laughs> I said I said long back take away that monster's face out of your bedroom. I don't want photos in your bedroom. Why are you putting me in your bedroom? Take away that monster. What protection? <laughs> What protection? Stickers. My papa sees everything. Hey. No papa. 
who can see that he has diarrhea? Then he, then he can see everything. Don't make men and women of God what they're not. Anointed, yes, but they have limitations. You put my photo in your bedroom. And that man now begins to hate me because he thinks, yeah, this person is taking my wife. He doesn't like me. Take away that photo then. <laughs> Sticker in your vehicle concerning the eye of the prophet watching over you. <laughs> this is what I'm prophet. <laughs> I said this when it was unpopular. How many remember? Is my story true? I said it for years and then I was very unpopular. I said, go and buy water in Nigeria at your own peril. Business is closed for all those that bought water. It's a case. God lifts you up, you begin to trust in water, not in God. Hallelujah. I stood and spoke. Yeah. I wrote in the chronic. The chronic gave me a page. I was writing. Writing daily there. Abana is. Jesus chat. But I'm not going to be a bishop. So I'm not going to be a bishop. Abana. I'm simply saying no water. Water is. I had a slogan. Water is for flushing your toilets. What was I saying? Flushing your toilets and cooking. Yeah. It went perfect. Why do we believe that water can deliver you? From what? Drinking oil from West Africa. My natabas are any oil, but my check and my toilet club will let you oil. Hey. Use of a towel to claim people's property. In those days, they will move with a towel. If they see your car and they cover it and say it's mine. Witchcraft. It's the spirit of religion. Whenever you substitute the name of Jesus, you are in trouble. Worshipping the man of God. Don't worship any man. No matter how mightily used they are, don't worship them. If you see a human being accepting worship, there's something wrong that has died in that person. We are never created to accept worship. When worship comes, we divert it to God. Once we begin to receive it, that's the fall. That's the beginning of a serious problem with anybody that you see accepting worship. When you enter into a building and everybody stops worshiping and they lie down, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You are, you are heading for, for, for disaster. It's not too far. Ladies and gentlemen, we have, we have one prayer item. Just to pray against the spirit of poverty. I hope you have provoked you today. Mm. Yeah. Please, in your own words, in your own holy anger, confront this thing in you, in your family, in your bloodline. It's a thing that you must confront. Let's pray. Father, here we are. We are confronting the spirit of poverty the case of poverty of our lives. We are breaking its hold now. It is no power. It is no authority over our lives. It cannot, it cannot stay. We have authority to break its hold. We break its hold over our lives, over our families, over our bloodline, upon our church. We break its hold now in the name of Jesus. It is no authority. It is no power of our lives. We are redeemed from such a case. Redeemed from such a case. Starting today, a turn around. I pray for this apostolic house that the spirit of poverty will be far from us. We have declared over years concerning this spirit spirit of want lack we break its hold supernaturally empower your people they have taken time and sacrificed and built your house may the spirit and the demons of poverty 
entities, demonic demons of poverty be broken in our bloodline. And may they leave us. They cannot stay in our lives. They cannot be part of us. Today we are releasing the wisdom of God, the power of God to permeate in our lives and empower each one of us in the name of Jesus. Oh, we bless your name, Lord, that that spirit is subdued today. It's subdued today. We fight it in our own generation. We confront it in our time. We confront its hold, its grip over us. We loosen its grip. We break its grip over our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray for every member of this church. And the spirit of poverty will be far away from us. In the name of Jesus, deliver us, Lord, from such a spirit. Deliver us, Lord, from such a hold. Set us free. In the name of Jesus, we are free. Our families are free. Our bloodline, posterity is free from the spirit of poverty. We confront it. We confront it. No more lack in our lives. Ideas, Lord, to make money. Ideas to come out of poverty. Ideas to come out of want. In the name of Jesus, we declare it today. We declare it today. We declare it today. That our children, Lord, will not suffer. That we will not suffer from poverty. From the case and its effect. In the name of Jesus. We declare today that as a church and every church member will experience some level of prosperity. In the name of Jesus. We speak it. We declare it today. Let it be so. In the name of Jesus. Empower your people, Lord, that have loved you. That honor you in tithes and offerings. Empower your people, Lord, that worship you and believe that you are the source of everything that is good. Move on their behalf, Lord. Let it be so. A new day, a new dawn. Lord, as we close this year, may things be different for them. Even starting now, entering into 2025. May things be different in the years that follow. In the name of Jesus. Wealthy men and wealthy women in this place, in this house. In the name of Jesus. Your word says, I've been young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, they are seen begging bread. May it never be so here. In the name of Jesus. Empower each one of these men and their families and women and their families supernatural empowerment wealth transfer to those that trust in you some trust in something else and everything else but we trust in the Lord our God in the name of Jesus we believe you and believe you in your word that you change people's lives and you empower them in a supernatural way and therefore spirit of poverty and demonic entities we address you you have no part in our lives. Give us hard-working minds, hard-working bodies. We are praying that the spirit of laziness will be far away from us. The spirit of religion will be far away from us. That we do not trust in man, but trust in you. You are the contact that we need. In the name of Jesus, help us in our hour of need. Empower us in our hour of need. In the name of Jesus Christ. We give you honor, Lord. And we give you glory today. In the name that is above every name. The name of Jesus. Say Amen. Put your hands together. Please. Wherever you go, fight this thing. It's a deadly demon. It will limit your vision. It will limit everything that you want to do. It will make you envious. Amen. And envy and witchcraft are not far away. When you begin to envy others, may God deliver us in the name of Jesus. Say Amen. There is a scripture, a scripture, closing scripture. May.